Welcome to the On Your Mind podcast, where we believe mental illness can be temporary and transformative. Stay tuned for innovative, effective tools from experts in the field of mental health. Hosted by Timothy J. Hayes, psychologist. This podcast aims to change the narrative around mental illness. Move from a place of fear to a place of hope and solutions. Here on On Your Mind. Brad Yates is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques, known as EFT. Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish. He's also the co-author of the bestseller, Freedom at Your Fingertips. And he's a featured expert in the film, The Tapping Solution. Brad, welcome. Good to see you again. Likewise, Timothy. It's always great to see you. I am... uh... I'm thinking it's been about a year since we were on the Integrative Mental Health Summit together and we did mm-hmm. another interview. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting caught up and talking about what's new in your world. And uh, I, I understand you're you're back to doing some live uh, seminars. Yeah, finally feeling that it's uh, safe enough to bring people together in a room. And you know, a lot of other people are doing things, live events are, are back there. And so it feels like to me, one of the best ways to deliver this work is in a in a group setting with with people in that shared energy. And you know from doing live workshops with EFT, when you have a bunch of people in there, there's there's something really special that happens there. So it feels like it's, it's important to, to do these kind of events. So yeah, since then I have been back out, got back to London and Dublin, where I was going every two years doing workshops. And just recently got back from doing another workshop in New York. Haven't been back there for uh, since before the pandemic. So that was really exciting. Great. So what, what size audiences are you doing in your, in your private session or in your, uh, in your live presentations? For these, I've been doing them a little bit smaller, keeping the rooms uh, smaller. This one in New York, I kept it to about 50 people. And the one in London, I think I kept it to 80 people. I've had bigger crowds there before, but, you know, just starting out again after the pandemic, I was like, all right, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and uh, try to try to keep it a little bit more um, compact. So what's the length of the of the session? And these events have been two hour evening events. I've I've done a range of things from uh, two hour evening events to half day workshops to day long workshops to full weekends, and there's there's something special about each kind, and it, it depends on the person who's coming. Like I've I've had people who come to the two hour workshops, especially if they've been to a longer workshop, when they're like, oh, it's just it's not long enough. Really want to go deeper. But I did a I did a weekend retreat in London uh, some years back, and I remember getting an email on Saturday night from a couple who was there, and they said, "This has been one of the best things we've done. This was so fantastic. We have loved it so much. We're not going to be there tomorrow because we're toast." <laughs> 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 After a full day of tapping, they they felt spent. It's like we don't know if we can, you know, we've absolutely love it, but we're just not sure we can uh, do that. So, and then I've had people come for the full weekend and and say, "When are you going to do a full week?" Haven't done that yet, but one of yeah, I've, I've uh, my experience with it. Part of this is due to the size of the room, but if we had anywhere from twenty five to thirty people, uh, some of the feedback forms would get. Um, filled out with this is too big there's too many of us you didn't get to work enough with us right so um and the other thing is we would do it from 9 a.m till 4 p.m with a half an hour lunch Mm -hmm. and uh most of the people at the end of the session were ready to have it be over it's so much tapping so much energy moving you know some sometimes so much crying right and relief and release um so I, I get it. I, but I also have, you know, there've been times when I've left those and I've been energized, right. And ready yes. to 
ready to keep going and do more. And other times where I'm felt like, okay, it's nap time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I, I get, don't, I don't get to predict how that, that flow of energy is going to change for me or be, yeah. be experienced in my system. Yeah. I'm usually pretty energized when I do it. It's funny when I do the, uh, the full weekend long workshops by Sunday afternoon, and I've spent, you know, so much time with these folks and it's, um, you know, it's been really, we, we've had a lot of laughs. We've had a lot of tears. It's been a powerful, intimate experience. So I get to that moment at the end where it's time to say goodbye and I lose it. And <laughs> just a, most of the time I'm like, and you guys are the best. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Stand there tapping so that I can get through it. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know, there, there are powerful shifts that happen for some people. What's uh, you just did one in New York. What was any stories to share from that process for us? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, there are a number of really uh, interesting things that had gone in, gone on in there. The first, I think it was the first woman to, to speak had some really heavy stuff. It's like, okay, there's <laughs> a way to get the ball rolling. <laughs> And I've had this a few times when I'm doing a live workshop and it's like, all right, didn't expect that in a live workshop. Um, and a lot of folks were then saying afterwards, wow, that's so resonated for me. That was so powerful. And, and they were very grateful to her for, for bringing that up. Um, had a, a woman who was going on a date the next night and she hadn't been on a date in ages and uh and all the nerves and so that was w one of those really cool things of being able to you know work on something that a, a lot of folks can relate to trying something new or something that's uncomfortable but it's one that opens itself up for a lot of humor and as a as a former actor and having done a lot of comedy like a lot of especially a lot of british comedy i love to find the humor in things and uh really it's it's a lot of fun in a live workshop to to do things like that and and then at the end for her to be like i'm totally looking forward to tomorrow night <laughs> so well and that's one of the keys that i have found is whether i was watching gary craig as he was creating this and doing his live workshops or in my own experience if we can lighten it up and help people understand this is this is all okay whatever's happening is okay because it's part of your life and this energy is going to move and when it gets stuck it feels one way and when it moves it feels another way and if we can help people understand that there's they will probably prefer the flow experience to the tight and intense and you know constricted experience yeah yeah and one of the things that helps it flow is to just lighten up have a little fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, uh, the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down, especially when we're talking about things that can be really heavy and who wants to go in and go all misery and dread and all these awful things. And if it's just so painful, you know, even though we will still get shift, it's not like humor is necessary for it, but, um, you know, as they say laughter is the best medicine. So it's like, well, if we can combine laughter with some tapping, now we've really got something. <laughs> well, and, and for me, a lot of times for myself or working with somebody else, the humor comes in when I realize I've been catastrophizing. I've been, you know, exaggerating the importance of this one thing every time that thought comes up, if I shy away from it. And I've been treating it as though it's going to be the end of my existence or the end of my ability to function without really realizing it. Yeah. And when I can shine a light on that, then and I start to laugh at it because it's really just this or that, which is an event which is going to pass. And I've been through many of those in my life. And yeah. that's so, why Gary Craig calls them our comedies. Yeah. You know, that, that the writing on our walls and uh, when we shine a light on them, and there have been many times where I have worked with folks who had things that were really upsetting from the past and they get to a point where they're laughing about it because it really does seem like a, a comedy, you know, not in that moment, but boy, afterwards we can get to a place of seeing, 
wow, I can't believe I believed that. Yeah, yeah. And and I can't really see what I'm believing as long as it's hidden back here. Right. Under that label of fear. Too yeah. much, too fearful, too painful, too and so, you know, it's it's so wonderful that my experience with the tapping has been it helps people shift and let go of enough energy so this other thing can bubble up, they can see it more clearly. You know, we have a another tool that I use quite often that's just a worksheet that people are filling out. And as they start filling out the worksheet and labeling, you know, what their thought is and what their emotion is and what the dynamic is in their life that and what they're making it mean, they start to get all tight and tense to the point where they might be crying so much they can't talk. Right. And then we'll just start tapping and breathing. Yep. And for the really intense situations, we might tap or breathe for 10 minutes, but eventually the energy comes down and they can soften and get through the rest of the worksheet. And most of those, by the time they're at the end of them, they're chuckling or laughing out loud. Yeah. Yeah. We had that stress response when we try to make a change, when we, when we threatened the status quo and, and even the, even if we can see the benefit of it, if we can acknowledge, yeah, I know it'll be beneficial to go there, but when I try to open that door, the stress just, I freeze and it's locked. And I think this is why uh, folks like uh, Dr. Bessel van der Kolk uses it in, in trauma work, because you want to address the trauma, but if you're that, that tightness, it's like, I can't go there. I cannot go in that room. And the tapping calms that down. So it's like, okay, I've got this. And it gives us that freedom to look at things. And yeah, and so often when we do then allow ourselves to look at it, it's like, I was afraid of that. <laughs> why, why was I worried about that? Not that it's always like that. I'm not certainly not suggesting that, oh yeah, once we, once we look at our demons, there's really nothing there. But, um, but f so often it's, uh, it's, you know, the, the image I always think of is, you know, a light shining behind a mouse. And if you're looking from one direction, you just see this giant shadow and you turn around. It's like, oh, it's just this little thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like to talk to people about how these things, these memories and, and the meaning I have for them, they got into me at a certain time in my life through my framework of what I thought life was and who I was. So the five-year-old Tim was terrified of going into any place that wasn't well lit. Yeah. You know, any place, even if it was on the main level. But a basement, there's just no way I would go into a basement that was dark. Right. In my 60s, I'm not so terrified of that. Right. But if I have a memory that got downloaded when I was five or six years old that involved that level of fear, I haven't been willing to look at it. And that part of my mind, the mindset of the five-year-old Tim is still there intact and is viewing and interpreting all of the memories and all the sensations through that five-year-old mindset. So it's as terrifying for me today in my 60s as it was when I was five years old until I can, as you say, shine that light on it yeah. and yeah. realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not five years old anymore. Many of us were walking around being uh, governed by a five-year-old. <laughs> Uh, I, I talked about that in, it was in this, the section that I was in, in the film, The Tapping Solution, and talking about how, you know, we, we make so many decisions on a daily basis based on things we picked up when we were five, six years old. And I think I said, you know, imagine you're trying to figure out your stock portfolio. Would you go down to the local kindergarten and say, hey, kids, help me make this important life decision. It's like, but we're doing that all of the time. All the time. <laughs> And we don't All realize it and, and and we're doing the best we can you know it's well and one of the things that i try and teach people is that we have this guidance system within us that's pretty near infallible and if we go into tightness or tension or any kind of a negative emotion rather than thinking that means something outside of me needs to change if i turn the focus inside and ask okay so what part of me is creating this and is it how old do i feel is one of the key questions we ask people in, in the work that i do with them yeah. and it's amazing how once people get past that that initial resistance of well i'm i'm, I'm this age what do you mean how old do i feel once right. they get past that and they get used to asking that question 
many people have reported to me, that's the best question I've ever taught them. Yeah. How old am I feeling right now? Yeah. I'll sometimes say, with your eyes closed, just imagine a whiteboard. And a number is going to appear there in a moment, but just wait. This thing that's happened, what number, what age are you? And just whatever number first pops up for them. And uh, yeah, and, and sometimes they're very surprised. It's like, yeah, and that's things because, you know, we make a decision at a young age, doing the best we can with all of the tools and resources and information in our hands, we come to a decision about, this is not safe for me. I'm no good at this, this, that. And from now on, we're going to operate from this as an over, uh, overriding rule for safety. And then we don't, and then we forget about it. And we're going through and it's like, you know, how come you didn't make that phone call? I, I don't know. Well, <laughs> Your five-year-old knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And whenever that, uh, that part of me gets resonated into activity, it takes over, right? That's now the filter through which I'm viewing the world. Yeah. But if I can understand that the, my ability to tune more into the physical body and read my tensions and pick up those early warning signs that I might be withdrawing from something or feeling tightness or tension or trying to push something away or grab onto something that's just got a natural flow. Right. Any of those tightnesses or tensions can serve as the wake up call for me yeah. to just breathe and soften and, or use the EFT tapping, but ask how old do I feel? What's the emotion that's going on here and start using these tools like EFT tapping to get that energy moving rather than in the stuck position it's been in. Yeah. Yeah. Everything starts to change because I'm seeing myself and the situation I'm in very differently. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time we had, a, we had the good fortune of, of having, I had grandparents that had a cottage on a lake. And up until I was 12 years old, we went there like every summer for two weeks or whatever it was. It's was like heaven for a kid. Yeah. Well, when my kids were very little, like three or four years old, I was, you know, in my late 30s, maybe 40 years old, I went back to that lake for the first time in all those years. And I cannot tell you how, I mean, it's honey, they shrunk the lake. <laughs> right? Honey, they shrunk the kids. It, I had these memories. I knew, you know, the diving stand and all, and the lake was massive and the creek that we had to jump across that we couldn't do for years. We find, it's like this little tiny thing. <laughs> You step over it. <laughs> it was amazing. It was just amazing how my perspective sh shifted. Yeah. It was a shock to my system. But we do that all the time, and we don't realize it internally. When, Whenever my younger self or, or fear or trauma gets resonated, it changes what I'm looking at the world through. Yeah. You know, in psychology, you talk about false memory syndrome, and so it's, it's like with, with trauma, there's big T trauma and little t trauma. So there could be false memory, big FM and, and little FM. <laughs> so, you know, maybe not horrible, you know, totally misremembering things, but having certain memories of things being a different way. And it's like, oh, I need to pay attention to this. I need to keep myself safe. I need to be afraid because things were like this. And yeah, you can come back later and go, oh, it wasn't like that. Sometimes yeah. it is. When I was a kid, there was a, a house that we used to go um, at summers, and there was this painting of this. It's called the uh, the philosopher's wife. It's um, I, and and it's just a scary painting. <laughs> and they used to we used to you know hide it in in different places so that people would find it and it would always give them a spook. And years later, went back to that house and found it again. It's like. No, that's still scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and it, it's important to understand that we aren't saying everything's fine and nothing is a problem. Right, right. We have traumas. We have difficult situations to deal with. We lose friends that move away. We have accidents. We have physical aches and pains. We have relationships that you know, go when we don't want them to go. And we have friends that die and family that die. And what's critical for us to understand is that 
ha- we can have that experience at one level. And if I'm doing it and I'm centered in this moment with my full adult capabilities, I have one experience of that. But if that's resonating also a trauma from when I was 12 or 15 or five or seven, right. I'm not going to be able to deal. With, I'm not going to bring my adult skill set to bear right. to navigate this situation. Yeah. We're trying to handle too many things at once and so many unresolved things. And it's like, oh, you've got this event going on? Yes. But what about all these other events that are that are similar that are getting triggered here? And, you know, it's like the, the stoic philosophy of it's not what happens. It's our thoughts about what happens that causes us the pain. And, you know, other than a, a absolute actual physical trauma to the body or, or illness or something like that, that where it's that kind of physical injury to the, the self, the other things, it is our, our thoughts about that. And to take that time to go back and, and question some of those thoughts and, and say, okay, what is it about this that's upsetting me? And like you said, at how old am I? What am I afraid of? What have I, what have I been told about this and why it should be this way. And uh, I sometimes like to call what I do reconsideration work. <laughs> so it's looking back at what's going on and reconsidering those those thoughts and beliefs and memories. So you look at it and say, oh, okay, it wasn't quite like that. And so all of this stuff that I'm dealing with right now, I can start to, to heal that. And there are times where I'll be working with someone and they're going through some challenge and it may not be the hugest challenge, but it's, it's difficult. And as we're tapping, it becomes, uh, you know, we're peeling layers of the onion and become aware of some other stuff that hasn't been uh, dealt with. that hasn't been, um, you know, cleared up from the past. And I'll throw out the idea that, so this current upset, you may have manifested this just so that you could deal with it. It's like something inside your higher self is like, you know, our lives would be better if we did some cleanup work from the past and we're not going to just come up with that out of the blue. So let's create some non, you know, some mild event just to, you know, open that door and go, oh, here's some other stuff. And now, I can clean up, you know, decades of things, creating a a greater freedom to uh, live a much, a much nicer life. I think one of the things that I've experienced so much with tapping is that when I start to get that tightness or tension, or I start to get flooded with an intense emotion, I can't see much. So if I can just do the simple process of the tapping and trust the process and repeat, you know, it's safe and healing. I'm going to be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to love and accept myself. I'm going to love, accept, and forgive myself. And then tap as I focus on the negative aspects of whatever is going on in the moment, whether it's a physical sensation, a negative thought, or a negative emotion. Yeah, I tend to spill off enough of the energy that something else can rise in my awareness, and I get a whole different view of what was going on. Absolutely. Yeah, we're one of them in in particular was the uh, uh, a thing that happened about three years ago, and I'm fully an adult. I'm in my own office, and I'm having this very negative response from from doing a a video with somebody, and uh, so I went home and I was doing the tapping and the breathing and. The, Middle of the night, I woke up and I'm tapping and breathing, and all of a sudden, I have flashed on a memory from when I was fourteen, and the situation that was going on in my life was I just wanted this person. We were, it was, it was recorded. So what he had said was recorded Mm -hmm. and he was denying that he said it. And I just wanted him to tell the truth. And I was so stuck and I wanted him to tell the truth. And middle of the night, I'm doing the tapping and all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, here's this memory from when I was 14 and my dad caught me dead to rights. And I wouldn't have told him the truth if he'd put a gun to my head. Yeah. So I did some more tapping. I had this other worksheet process I do. I was doing that worksheet process. And all of a sudden, I saw an aspect of that memory from 14 that in all the years since I was 14, I never saw that aspect. And the tears came. and 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 as I saw it, I thought, 
oh my gosh, that's that was clearly what I thought at 14, and it's so clearly not true or accurate. Right. And then it immediately lost its impact over me. Yeah. But I couldn't see it for all those years until it came up and I was thinking, oh, this person's the one who's not telling the truth. This is what you were just talking about. I was carrying this burden of the trauma of having lied to my dad back when I was 14, completely outside my conscious awareness. Yep, yep. And the thing that was stuck in it for me was this horrible, you know, the the ramifications of this horrible conclusion that I downloaded, and the conclusion was false. It was, as I said earlier, it was a catastrophizing thought yep. about something. It blew it way out of proportion. But I hope I you called this guy in. to thank him for lying. <laughs> No, I send him. I send him money every year now. <laughs> I send him a large donation every year. He could, he might have said, "Tim, I normally wouldn't lie, but I felt that you had something you needed to resolve, so yeah. I just felt oh, yeah. I'd trigger you." Yeah, that guy's a saint. He's an absolute saint, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, I wouldn't have had that discovery if I wasn't willing to do my work. Yep. In this worksheet process I do and the EFT tapping, if I wasn't willing to turn the focus inside and say, gee, why am I waking up in the middle of the night focused on something that's already over, you know, two or three days after the fact? If I wasn't willing to turn the focus on myself and use the tools that I know work for me, I'd still be carrying that. And that's the thing is it the tapping as it calms down the nervous system gives us that feeling of safety to look at that stuff. So most people are walking around with blinders because it there's stuff that's too uncomfortable. And it's like, even if this stuff is completely running my life and keeping me from all kinds of great experiences, I've, I, I can't look at it. I can't handle it. And as we calm down and go, oh, you know, it might be safe for me to look at that. And Oh, what do you know? It wasn't what I thought it was. I've been, you know, it's like the, the smoke detector. It's, I'm, I'm so afraid of it because it's going to tell me there's a fire. It's like, oh, it's just the batteries needed to be changed. How, how about that? So that's, you know, that, that's why I'm on such a mission to make tapping known by as many people as possible is like, just give it a try, give yourself permission and allow yourself to feel that it's, it's safe. To, to look at some of these things, to question some of these these thoughts and beliefs and behaviors. And there's a, a level of freedom and joy on the other side. Well, and I, I keep thinking about how it, it might be possible that there are some things that were too overwhelming for me to deal with when I was eight or 10 or 12 years Absolutely. old that, that are still, they would be too much for me to deal with today. It might, it might be possible. But every time I've run into it, and I've done the work and looked at it, those things that I get activated in me today that seem like they're so overwhelming, when I realize that they're from back then, and then my adult coping mechanisms and life experience get come back online, so to speak, yeah. I'm fully capable of handling pretty much everything that was overwhelming me when I was 14 years old. Yeah. Yeah, expression from uh, another EFT practitioner uh, it was, you have handled 100% of your worst days. And if you could handle it back then with the perhaps meager resources you had at that time and the limited experience and intelligence and maturity, it's like you handled it then because you're still here. You may not have handled it as gracefully as you would have liked, but at some level, it's like, so now it's like, okay, if I was able to handle it then, I could handle it better now because I have this knowledge, experience, wisdom, maturity, and tools like tapping and, and things like that. And then that gives us a, uh, that, that permission and that sense of safety to be able to look at, at some of these things and say, okay, I can go back in here and now reconsider it and, and, and change my mind about it. Yeah, I remember, and I know you started um, with hypnosis Mm -hmm. clinical hypnosis work. Yeah. I remember one of the things that really tipped me into um, being more free to share the EFT tapping was when um, a gentleman who had rapid transformation therapy, and it was a hypnosis technique. He was phenomenal at it. Um, 
I think it was one of those personal genius things where it was difficult for him to teach others because it came so easily to him. And in the middle of one of those deep trauma sessions, he had the person start doing EFT tapping. And I thought, okay, I, I, there is some credibility to this at that higher level. And it let me get into it even more deeply because um, as, as simplistic as it is, when I'm just slowing my breathing and tapping on the points on my face and body and fingertips, it is powerful. Yep. Yep. I mean, most of us know that stress is a problem and, you know, the at most, if not all of the issues that, that trouble us are either caused by or worsened by stress. So I have a simple mind body technique to calm down stress can be so powerful in so many different ways and, and at different levels, it could be just a, a minor little, all right, just going to calm down a little bit to, you know, the deep work that, uh, that a therapist might do using EFT in a trauma session. Well, and I've had a number of people that were in, in my EFT one day workshops who get rid of aches and pains. And, um, I used to be kind of clueless as to how that could happen, but I wouldn't deny their experience. And then I got turned on to the work of Dr. John Sarno, where he talks about exactly. the um, tension myoneural syndrome. So tension that's held in the muscles and the nerves. And his research indicated that if a tension has some muscles in my body constrict blood vessels, even a reduction of as little as 10% of oxygen to supply to tissues is enough to initiate excruciating pain. Yep. So if you've got somebody that can't lift their arm, you know, over their shoulder for years and they come and they do an EFT tapping session. And after one or two sessions, they're swinging their arm over their head. They go, Oh my God, it's a miracle cure. No, they just released some tension right here that was pinching off the blood supply and causing a stabbing pain. So they wouldn't want to lift through it. Disclaimer uh, for people watching: your results may vary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but only because we there are sometimes in EFT with those one minute wonders where something miraculous happens, and it's figuring out what because there be, could be all kinds of memories and beliefs and things that are in that in that tension. So we might, uh, you know, sometimes it clears up quickly when when Dr. Roger Callahan discovered you know using the tapping uh, thought field therapy you know, cleaned up this woman's uh, lifelong water phobia in a matter of, you know, less than a minute, I think it was. And, uh, and unfortunately, when people hear about that, then they expect, oh, well, so EFT, it always works in less than a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> there are there are benefits that may be, I believe it is always working. And there are always benefits, they may be too subtle to notice at times. Um, and and some of these things take longer, but yeah, that's that's absolutely it. As we as we calm down that 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 stress that's causing the pain and the restriction in the muscle, those, those things can happen. I had a similar thing when I was first starting out. Somebody with a back problem. I was at a, a health fair, and I had a had a booth, and somebody came over, and um, you know, I said on a scale of zero to ten, how troublesome is your back? And so like an eight. And we did some tapping and said he felt a little bit better. And they, they left and they came back about two hours later and they said, I don't know if you've been around the park, but over another part of this health fair, there's a dance floor. And we've been over there dancing. And what the did you do to me? <laughs> he was out, they'd been out there dancing. He had forgotten that he had a back problem. And it's, yeah, we're, we're, as we clear up the, uh, the stress, that uh, that constricts those muscles and the blood flow and and causes that pain there's uh there's great things that can happen and i one of the things that when, I, when i'm working with folks on pain is reassuring the mind that we're not going to just forget about it because there's that that part of us that we well we need the pain to remind us that there's something that needs to be taken care of and it's like this idea if i break my leg and there's no pain then I won't bother to go and get it set because, hey, I tapped away all the pain. So I'm not going to, no, tapping is not going it, it, to, it doesn't, it doesn't make us stupid. It's like if we're, if we're on a, on a tall building and we have a fear of heights and we tap and it's like, oh, I feel relaxed now. We're not going to decide. I'd probably feel fine if I just stepped over the edge. 
we still we still have a respect for what what is true but it allows us to to question what what isn't true or what may not be true well and dr john sarno who's a medical doctor he's actually a surgeon that created that concept of the tension myo neural syndrome he would do body scans. He would have people come in. He wouldn't just have them come in limping or and then just have them start doing his release work or EFT tapping. He would set them through a whole set of scans to make sure there wasn't a broken bone or bone cancer or something dislocated. But once he found out that there was no major physical disruption, then he would start them with that mental emotional technique, very similar to what the EFT tapping is, to great effect. No, no more back. What's his book? No more back pain. The his famous one. Oh, he's um, he's got five or six different books. Yeah, there's um, Doctor John I, Sarno. I read that S -A one years ago. S A R N O. Yeah, great. I got a lot of help from his book many years ago. Yeah, and uh, John Stossel did a. So you can find it on YouTube. John Stossel did a a, a newsreel on on him. And he also did the, uh, they did a documentary on him. Fortunately, he was able to see it before he died. And that was, uh, that is still available on the internet through um, alltheragedoc.com. Hmm. Because his theory was that the vast majority of back pain is unconscious rage. That's being held in the tension, the mental, emotional, physical tension in the body. So when they did his documentary, um, and you can go, you can watch it for five or six bucks or buy it for a little bit more, but it's, um, I am aware of a number of people who have gotten improvement just by watching that documentary. All the rage, D-O-C for documentary.com. And as you were saying, I'm not trying to imply that if you tap, all your pains go away. I was just talking about how, it gave, when I read the Dr. Sarno work, it gave me a way to understand how some of these things that had been happening yeah. in these EFT classes could happen. They weren't miracle healings. They were just releasing the stress that would cause pain. Right, right. And that's what I'll point out to folks. It's like, it's not, uh, you know, I'm not saying EFT is doing a miracle healing. It's just calming down the stress that's at the at the root of what you're aware of at the moment, that the distress you're experiencing at the moment. Well, I just looked at the clock and realized we're coming down on time here. Why don't you just take a breath and center yourself and think, okay, what's what, something that we've already talked about that you want to highlight or something we haven't mentioned yet? What we were talking about um, before we started the uh, the actual interview um, about sending out loving, blessing energy and the idea that we have stuff that blocks us from doing that. And how tapping is a great way to question those those unconscious beliefs about why we couldn't or shouldn't acknowledge the loving energy that's at the core of who we are and then send that out because it's such a, a, a powerful practice and uh it's a it's a total win-win situation because <laughs> as we as we feel that you know get in touch with that loving energy and, and who we are and where what's what's really there and then allow ourselves to send that out to the world um it's just a powerful thing and and just acknowledging that we do have stuff that you know may be from when we were 14 years old or five years old or whenever it might be that says nope you're not in a loving world you don't have there's not a loving energy don't send love to other people be afraid uh, be angry hold that rage you know, we're not bad or stupid for feeling rage in our bodies. We're just trained to do that because, and we've learned that this is what we need to do to protect ourselves and given ourselves that permission to question that and then uh, hopefully let it go both for ourselves and for the, for the world at large. Because, you know, whether we're sending loving energy out or we're just feeling more peace in our own body and we're cleaning up our own little corner of the street, then, uh, then that makes a difference in the world. Yeah, and you know, most of us who've practiced that understand that if I'm going to be sending loving energy or loving thoughts out to somebody else, I have to have it in me first. So I get the benefit. Hard to give what we don't have. Yeah. yeah. And we've got it. And we just have to clear what sometimes I'll just say, I'm clearing what doesn't feel like peace. I'm clearing what doesn't feel like love. It's there. We just gotta clear away what's covering it up. And I love the idea about tapping in the positives. Um 
so often that gets lost because people come to us as practitioners and say, I've got this ache, I've got this pain, I've got this stress, I've got this negative emotion, I've got this horrible relationship dynamic, and we'll start tapping on the negatives. In my best sessions and works with people, I don't leave until we've tapped in plenty of the good. Yep. Yeah, so tap in the love and send it out to others. Well, uh, it's delightful, again, to spend some time with you. Thanks for taking this time. It's um, the website, again, that you would most direct people to is? Tapwithbrad.com. Excellent. And, of course, uh, they can find you all over YouTube. All over YouTube, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I greatly appreciate your being willing to share with us, and I look forward to the next time we chat. Well, it's always great to talk to you, and thank you for the opportunity to share this. Blessings. Brad Yates is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques, known as EFT. Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish. He's also the co-author of the bestseller, Freedom at Your Fingertips. And he's a featured expert in the film, The Tapping Solution. Brad has also been a presenter at a number of events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, and has done teleseminars with The Secret Stars, Bob Doyle and Dr. Joe Vitale. Brad has been heard internationally on a number of internet radio talk shows, and he also has over 1,000 YouTube videos that have been viewed over 34 million times. More information is available at tapwithbrad.com You've been listening to the On Your Mind podcast offered by Journey's Dream where we support people through mental health challenges to a place of true and lasting well-being. If you love our show, we invite you to visit onyourmindpodcast.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our helpful resources. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.